Hey everyone, welcome to The Play Philosophy. I'm Rach and The Play Philosophy is where I share stories, experiences and tips on how you can bring play into your life, get to know yourself, grow yourself and just generally create a better world by bringing a sprinkle of playfulness into all that you do. We're supposed to record a little jingle for you here, but in the interest of not procrastinating and quitting, uh, I haven't done it yet, so I'm just going to improvise. Da -da -da -da, the play philosophy. This is actually my first YouTube video. I've been sharing the play philosophy for the last year or so in a variety of creative formats, doodling, writing, podcasting, and I've wanted to start YouTube for a while now, but I've been putting it off because of this like underlying belief that if I start something, I will open myself up to the inevitability of quitting and failing. And so I thought, why not confront that belief head on and make it the topic of this first video? I'm gonna cover how I've come to view myself as a quitter over the years and how those experiences shape that view of ourselves as a quitter. And then I'm gonna share a completely incorrect assumption which fuels that belief of being a quitter and hopefully help you to see yourself differently. Part one, how I've come to view myself as a quitter. So without giving you my entire life story, which will require some restraint on my part because I love to chat, um, I wanna give you some context, which is this. I have come to view myself as a quitter because I quit stuff. As a kid, I started so many things that never amounted to anything. I'm gonna name it a few and I'm gonna read them for you because I can't remember them all, there are that many, and also I want to read them at pace for effect. There was ballet and tap, cheerleading, gymnastics, Irish dancing, brownies, recorder lessons, violin lessons, guitar lessons, piano lessons, did do those for six years, choir, hockey club, drama club. You're probably getting an idea right now of the patience and generosity of my parents to indulge me in such my endeavours. I was going to become a jewellery maker, a candle maker, upcycle plant pots and sell them on the local car boot sale. I would get an idea, frantically make a plan, sometimes buy the materials, and then... nothing. I would decide I was going to be a songwriter, I would spend three days in my bedroom penning lyrics that I would never put a tune to and never look at again. This has taken me probably to age 16. But I'm sure you get the message, it's a pattern that I continued into my university life and my adult life. And there's also plenty of stuff that I have achieved and sustained over a long period of time. But I've built these bricks almost of like proving to myself that I just can't sustain stuff and just can't do stuff and that I'm going to quit stuff. So it's almost built this wall that hides away a lot of the positive things that I have accomplished. And maybe you feel the same. Because we have a negativity bias, right? We remember the stuff that we don't do and we forget the stuff that we do do. <laughs> do do. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. There are some things that I've talked about here that I think it's a shame that I quit, especially when Captain Hindsight gets involved and I realise that lots of the things that I quit when I was a child, I quit out of fear and lack of confidence because I was pretty shy when I was younger. Would I be performing Swan Lake by now? if I hadn't at age four quit ballet because I was so terrified about having to perform on stage? Would I be a married housewife with a pantry full of baked goods if I hadn't have quit brownies when my friends did? But, and I say this with emphasis, for my own sake, as much as for yours, you cannot let things that your past, less confident you made you quit, stop you from getting started right now. Because the scary part in all of this is once you come to view yourself as a quitter, you just don't get started. You don't. And then you end up living this sad and boring existence where you don't do anything even for the fun of it because you're living in this terrible fear that once you start you're going to quit and it's just shit. Harboring all of this unrealized potential. Which leads me to I feel like Emma Stone in Easy A, you know when she um, she's doing like the transitions in her video with the paper? Hold on. <whistles> False assumptions alert. I don't know if this will be backwards for you. I don't know if you're appreciating my efforts to keep this visually varied for you. False assumption alert. 
all of the things that I've talked about quitting and failing at rely on this false underlying assumption that the value in what we do doesn't come from doing the thing or starting the thing, but only comes from completing the thing, whatever that even means, or for doing the thing for a sustained period of time. But what if it's not? What if the value is from starting the thing? What if the value is from doing something for 10 minutes? Who decided that doing something and getting value from it had to be this whole big thing? If I post this video today and then I lose interest and I never post a video again and I move on with my life, have I failed? Was it a waste of my time? Was it a waste of time that I would have otherwise spent binge watching Netflix and agonizing over whether I should start the video or not because what if I start it and then I quit and then I failed? So my ask of you today is just this one thing. Go and do something. Get started, do it for just five minutes and then just marinate yourself in the sense of achievement from getting started. Uh, hey, Rachel here, obviously. Um, I'm just editing the video that you are currently in the process of watching, um, as you can tell, because I'm dressed in an entirely different outfit. Um, part of not quitting stuff is just following the inspiration of when you feel motivated to do it, and that so happened uh, to be me during the development of my hair dye. However, I'll, I'll be honest with you, not that satisfied with that last section. I really thought I'd hit you with a punchy call to action about, you know, starting something and doing something. I don't think it was punchy enough, so I've just come here to pack an extra punch. So consider this the exclamation mark to the last point, uh, which is start something, do something. Maybe your hair dye's developing. Maybe you've gone for a walk. Maybe you just sat at your desk. Just fucking do it. Do something. I think that gets the point across. On to the last bit. So, as they say in the movies, that's a wrap on today's video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments and like the video and subscribe. I believe that's what the people of the YouTube say you should say in these things. See you next time. I'm gonna be sharing some practical and playful tips about how to stop feeling like such a quitter. Bye. Oh, look, this is the part where I'm like, hey, look at me, I'm Rach, I'm smiley, I'm approachable, I look like fun. Subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscribe.